to um, move to bring in our next guest. She is Elise Stefanik. She's our uh, the congresswoman from New York. She's also, if I could just say, a wonderful person who's celebrating her first Christmas with a baby. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I have to Thank tell you, you that again and again. <laughs> They are so special with a child. It is it a is. miracle, and we just, Thanksgiving was wonderful. We're so excited for Christmas. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. We brought you your, um, because we love getting your take on all topics, but we especially want to get your take on CNN firing their formerly star anchor, Chris Cuomo, which is effective immediately following, I guess, a law firm's internal review at CNN, and they said, we, guess, we just got to let him go. What are your thoughts on that? Well, this is better late than never. Um, I called for CNN to terminate Chris Cuomo back in August. For some time, we have known that Chris Cuomo is complicit in both the cover-up, but also the smearing and retaliation against the victims of sexual harassment and sexual assault of his brother, uh, the former governor, Andrew Cuomo, the worst governor in America. Um, this should have happened a long time ago. Uh, I'm glad that CNN has taken this action. But there is still accountability that needs to be um, heard. Uh, Rachel, there is a sitting head of the State University of New York who has been revealed as part of the efforts to retaliate against these women uh, and was part of the criminal cover-up. Uh, and Kathy Hochul, the current governor of New York, needs to make sure that we completely clean house from the criminal cesspool and the corrupt cronies that supported Governor Cuomo. You know, Congresswoman, the sexual harassment allegations around the governor, which is the centerpiece of this entire controversy, doesn't seem to stop at the governor's office. I want to read you a quote from CNN regarding Chris Cuomo's firing. Chris Cuomo was suspended earlier this week pending further evaluation of new information that came to light about his involvement in his brother's defense. We retained a respected law firm to conduct the review, and we have terminated him effective immediately. They went on in that statement to say additional information, mm -hmm. new information, played a role in their immediate action. Chris Cuomo has had a sexual harassment allegation made against him in the past. This, this congresswoman seems to be rampant. Absolutely, and I think it's important that the public know what that additional information is. Uh, they need to immediately turn over that additional information to the State Assembly and State Senate, uh, as well as to the independent investigation. Of course, that first tranche of documents has been released to the public. But as we know now, there is now a federal investigation into Governor Cuomo's crimes, um, and it's important that they have access to all of that information. So CNN needs to turn that over as quickly as possible. Well, Congresswoman, here's what, uh, here's what Chris Cuomo had to say about being fired. He said, this is not how I wanted my time at CNN to end, but I've already told you why and how I helped my brother. So let me now say I'm disappointed at this. I could not be more proud of the team at Cuomo Primetime and the work we did as CNN's lowly rated but number one at CNN show uh, in the most competitive time slot. I owe them all and will miss that group of special people who did really important work. At least there's a lot to unpack and you have, uh, whether it's him misrepresenting to his bosses, uh, whether what happened in the nursing homes was, will ever get to the bottom of that and, and his, his willingness to prop up his, his governor brother in the process. But do you think, I mean, there's a reason why it's solidified in the minds of Americans that CNN is fake news. I mean, Donald Trump ma made it a phrase that people resonated with and then they delivered on it and have continued to. And as Joe Concha pointed out, they've lost eight of 10 viewers in their prime time in the last year. People don't buy yeah. what they're selling. Can they make a change? Well, there is a reason that CNN's ratings have plummeted. Um, the American people fundamentally understand that they are pushing fake news, they are pushing propaganda. And when it comes to the Cuomo brothers, look, CNN is guilty of propping up Andrew Cuomo, uh, covering up for the nursing home scandal. That conflict of interest with having a brother interviewing Governor Cuomo, it was like the Cuomo hour, hour every single night on TV. That is not why people watch the news. They want fair and balanced, they want objective coverage, which is why CNN continues to spiral. And to be honest with you, one of the reasons why CNN's numbers continue to go down is because they were so obsessed with uh, opposition to President Trump for so many years, uh, which was not objective. We know now that they were perpetrators of the Russia hoax and so much false information. And the American people deserve the truth. They deserve objectivity. And that's just not what they are getting at CNN. 
Yeah, you're so right about that. The media was completely complicit, especially CNN, in propping up the Cuomos in order to present him as a foil or alternative to um, Donald Trump, who they villainized repeatedly and repeatedly. I want to move to another topic with you, Congresswoman, because we see that another crisis in the Democrat Party and, and a direct result of their very dangerous and irresponsible policies is the illegality of people coming across the border in record numbers. And now we're hearing that in New York City, they want to pass legislation that would allow New York's non-citizens to vote. I want to hear from you what Republicans are going to do to fight this and why this is, I think, could possibly be a, a, one of the most dangerous ways of undermining our democracy and, and the meaning of citizenship. Well, we are going to use every avenue to challenge this. This is unconstitutional. This is illegal. Uh, we need to make sure that it's American citizens who are voting in our elections, not illegal immigrants. And this is more of the far-left progressivism that you're seeing from New York City and, frankly, New York State. The New York State Republican Party has announced that we are going to challenge in every way possible. Uh, Republicans who have been elected in New York City are going to stand up. But this is not just Republicans. Every American should be opposed to this. Absolutely. This is about undermining the integrity of our elections. And this is is, you know, when you think the Democrats have gone too far, they always go a step further, further to the left. So we need to stand strong as Americans against this undermining of our constitutional elections. Yeah, and now to a story that I don't think is getting enough attention, even from us this morning. You brought this up earlier, Pete. You talked about the projection of weakness on the world stage, and others have noticed China is becoming more aggressive towards Taiwan, Russia becoming more aggressive in, in Ukraine. Now, President Biden is scheduled to meet with Vladimir Putin. Um, I believe, is it, is it today or in the coming on days? Zoom. On Tuesday. Yeah. On Tuesday, he's going to meet with Vladimir Putin, expected to address the sort of posturing and military buildup around Ukraine. Here's what Biden is saying about that meeting coming up. What are you here to prevent Russia from invading Ukraine? The AP is reporting that they're expected to potentially invade in 2022. We are aware of Russia's actions for a long time. And, uh, my expectation is we're going to have a long discussion. Do you accept Putin's red line on the train? I don't accept anybody's red line. Now you can see at the bottom of your screen it says video call. It will be a Zoom call between Biden and Putin. What has to happen in that meeting, Congresswoman? Well, first of all, Putin senses weakness, and we have seen nothing but weakness when it comes to President Joe Biden's foreign policy. Uh, this is not the first uh, step that Putin has taken to take advantage of that weakness. We've seen cyber attacks. We've seen ransomware attacks. We've seen also uh, this administration prioritize Russia when it comes to energy rather than our European allies. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we are going to see strength from Joe Biden. He should be showing strength. He needs to stand up strongly with Ukrainians, make sure that Vladimir Putin understands that there will be significant global consequences, not just from the United States, but from allies around the world. Uh, and again, you would not see this happen, happen under President That's Trump right. because mm -hmm. Putin understands strength. He understands American strength and consequences. And just look at those responses from Joe Biden. Those were weak responses, and Putin sees that. Yeah, you give him a pipeline. Uh, and ultimately, yeah. you give him a, a green light, and that's exactly what Putin seems to be sensing right now. So we'll see where that Zoom call goes. I got to get your take. Well, we have to get your take on one more thing this morning as well. This past week, we heard oral arguments in the Supreme Court uh, about a uh, a law in Mississippi that would ban abortion after 15 weeks. It is a direct challenge to Roe v. Wade, really the first that's come about with a conservative majority on the court because of Donald Trump. Um, you heard the oral arguments. What's your takeaway from that, and what do you hope and expect to see? Uh, my takeaway is that uh, it is long overdue. We need to stand strong when it comes to defending life. Look, I'm a new mom. I understand that we need to protect life as Americans. And I heard one of my colleagues say something that I think we should think about as every American's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We mentioned life first for a reason in our founding documents. So um, this is going to be very important. It's going to be important to protect the constitutional protections for life in this country. And what's very concerning 
concerning is now you're hearing Democrats talking about packing the courts because they can't win elections, because uh, they want to undermine the system. They are already talking about packing the courts. Yeah, absolutely. Elise Stefanik, Congresswoman, thank you for joining us today and thanks for your wise words. No one understands the humanity of a fetus more than a new mom. And so thank you for joining us today. Merry yes. Christmas to you as Merry well. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.